exciting day's pool we've got for you today. The last 16 and the quarterfinals of this 2024 IPA Professional World Championships. And we are starting with potentially a match for the ages. As has been mentioned before, these two met back in 2018, our very first live televised match yeah, at a World Championships. That time, it was the boomerang who came out on top. This time, can Mark Boyle break his demons and get past the last 16 at a World Championships for the very first time in his career? Well, if that break is anything to go by, he may be up against it because what an early split this is for Simon Ward. He's absolutely pummeled them. Delighted to be joined in the commentary box. Dan Davies made the hop, skip and a jump over from the studio. Through the arena there and uh, into the commentary box. Afternoon, Dan. Afternoon. What a match we've got on our hands here. Worthy of a final. Yeah. Bring out the cliches early. But, yeah, um, it is. Simon Ward, the... I suppose you would say most successful player never to have won it, having got to two finals. And also, Simon Ward has won around the 10 mark in terms of IPA titles. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, definitely. Um, if anything, the most successful player, but I suppose Boyle as well. Because Boyle's rapidly getting to, if he hasn't already got to the... Oh, 100%, he's surpassed that. Yeah. He's around about 10 IPA I, titles. I, 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 would how say, I would say more. Right. Yeah, probably is, yeah. Um, yeah. But 21. 21, I'm told. Tour titles. 21? <laughs> yeah. He's only been playing five years, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, <laughs> it's astonishing, isn't it? No, I think he's been on the tour because we, now, hasn't he? Because we, we, we've talked about it now, but the the 2018 match between these two, yeah. Boyle was still an amateur. Really? Yeah. So that was his first, I think that was the, the sort of, his last tournament as an amateur because the new amat the new pros come in after the Worlds. Yeah. Um, and Simon Ward was quite annoyed at the draw. Because mm. we all knew how good Boyle was by then, because he won two Opens in his first year on the tour right. as an amateur. Um, but but Ward got through that one. Yeah, they've got previous here, haven't they? Yeah. Uh, I think I've always had Simon Ward down as a as a big game player. Um, likes the centre stage more he than does. most. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> this could be a quick match. <laughs> But this, These two uh, keep breaking like this. <laughs> wow. Well, this this Boyle guy, <laughs> he doesn't mind centre stage as well. Look at that. Yeah, crunched. Yeah, there's going to be fireworks in this match. It's it started at a fair lick and it's not going to get any worse. So the obvious problem is uh, is the red and yellow... At the bottom of the table, I think the red's, red doesn't quite go. If it does, you need to be really pinpoint with the cue ball. No, I don't know if he can pop the middle of the three yellows and screw back through the gap and then take that one in the same pocket. It looks tight. He'd have to really dig into the cue ball, I suspect. Yeah, so, I, I mean, I don't know if the red actually goes into the bottom left corner. It might do. It does look tight. Really hard from a from our perspective to tell. These are the frames uh, that. These are the frames though where you see somebody like Mark Boyle make 
tends to make these tricky clearances look very simple. Play that one pinpoint killer positional shot. I mean, it's not it's not the only problem red either, because the one near the black spot doesn't go through either corner. Oh, so what's he done here? Has he left himself the perfect angle? I think he was looking to leave himself an angle here to top through into the yellow. And I think he's got it. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Doesn't want to slide past it. That will do nicely. What a shot. What a shot. I mean, that, that wasn't the great shot. The the great shot was leaving himself the angle previously. Yeah. Which isn't the most difficult thing, you, you know, he's, he's ever going to have to do on a pool table. But that was his best chance to to attack that area. And he nailed it first time. Slightly under hit that. He should be fine. Nice angle here too. Thought it might be a bit straight, but it's actually spot on. Too run a bit far. Ooh, now then. Wow, that has gone a long way. He might have to take this in the middle now. That's very uh It's a big risk to cut it back. You're you're tracking towards the yellows. Yeah. Very uncharacteristic for Mark. He's uh probably is one of his many strengths, but his biggest strength probably is cue ball control. He's cutting it back. Yeah, oh, well watch the jaws going. here as well. He's running out of time. He's already used his extension. Nailed the pot. Mm. He'll take the position. He will take that, yeah. That could have gone a lot worse. If he hit the backside of that yellow, mm. he could have been in real trouble. And he could have been snookered. Anything could have happened. As it is, you've probably got to give him credit that that was his margin of error and he's just about stuck to it. Part of the pocket. Even at this stage in the match, those are the little ones that can hurt Simon Ward. Because Mark Boyle isn't the sort of player who's going to give you a lot of hope. No. Um, and just moments like that, where they run out of position and there's a chance, there's a chance that a glimmer. something could go wrong. They are the moments where you just sit that little bit more proudly in your seat. Sort of yeah. Meerkat over the table to see what's going on. They almost hurt more. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, for, from Simon's perspective, he would rather that have just been a routine finish. Mark hadn't overrun that yellow uh, cue ball. See there, 1-3, lost 2 against uh, Simon Ward. So not... Not a player like most that he's kind of got in his pocket. No. And has a great win record against. Um, last 16, this is his best performance in the world. Can like we just we point out that, that last year's professional, he won 80% of his matches. Yeah. Three. In the professional events last year and 84% of his matches in the IPA overall. Yeah. That's unbelievable, isn't it? He's The guy's a joke. That is it's, it's eighty four percent. It's consistency uh, like next level, isn't it? Now can't help but think you know when matches start like this you can't help but think it's all about it's all about the break sometimes. Until until the mistakes start to creep in, which I'm sure there'll be the odd one in yep. this match. But you can't help but think that every single break needs a ball. And Simon Ward's got one there. So yellows, yellows are the colour. Yeah, th this makes sense to me because those three around the middle, you can use either of the two edge ones, definitely the one in the top half of the table, yeah. to clear the rest of the pocket. Yeah, the one clearest the ball, nearest the ball climbs definitely your one, I think. Yeah, I, d I do think 
it would squeeze the other one, but it, it might not move the red sufficiently out of the way. Mm. Um, so it's about how he gets down there. Wants to do that sooner rather than later. Yeah, it needs that to slow up. Perfect. That is perfect as well because he's uh, should be able to dribble this one in. Yep. And uh, leave himself the angle to stun up table to uh, to make life very easy for himself. If he gets that cue ball up by the bulk line, it's effectively frame over. Needs an angle though. Doesn't want that to be too straight. It's pretty straight. It's quite straight, yeah. Would love the cue ball to have just been a couple of inches closer to that bottom cushion. I think... See the little grimace on his face? I think he could um, screw this back and play reverse side. And get he up can, he just doesn't want to be playing those shots, does no, he? No, it's, it's much more difficult than... There you go. Didn't want that kiss on the yellow. No. Really didn't. Um, really didn't. Yeah, this is awkward now. Yep. We could be looking at uh, yellow off of the other yellow. Off of the red into the middle. Or just a straight cut into the corner and... Cut into, into the, the corner and screw round the sides, I think. Anything can happen here, though. That yellow needs to go. That's a good shot. Uh, can he cut that yellow in the centre? Is it impossible? Probably not. Is it so thin that he's got to hit the white really hard and, and the white's going all over the place? I don't know. He'll know better than us. Down on it fairly quickly. You would think it's reasonably makeable, and it is. Nice flick on that red here will oh, do him lovely. Lovely flick. That is a beautiful little flick. They're the little bits of uh, rub he needs. Now, I suppose the question here is, do you stick or twist? Do you just drop this in and play the double? Or do you drop it in and try and drop it in the centre? Because that's not an easy shot. Well, I don't know why he didn't like that so much. I mean... I think he caught it thinner than he wanted. I reckon he was trying to leave it for the double, and he's now gone too far. Maybe. I mean, this does go in the middle. It's tight, and you don't like to be playing this from, from quite far away. If you're right behind it, then you, you, you think feel like this is in, but that's fine. Yeah. don't often see a lot of emotion from Simon. He's very calm. Um, very calm. Uh, cool, calm, collected, as, as both are, really. See what I've noticed, that is a very well used piece of chalk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's the square variety and not the round variety that we're used to now. Ah. There's Matt Schofield at the table. Yeah, three each uh, in the second set, and he's a set up as well, so this really is a big frame. Is it three each in the second set? Three wow, each in the second because set. last I saw, mm. Lee Shepard was 3 0 up in that set. Oh, wow. And Schofield's at the table as well. Yep. You can see it on Lee Shepard's face. He's just shaking his head. He's not happy. I mean, what a, uh, what a run for both of those players. But you have to say, particularly Matt Schofield. Mm. Now, don't get me wrong. Class, class amateur. Um, made an amateur final. Obviously a great player. But Lee Shepard is the amateur to beat and will be, in my opinion, one of the professionals to beat. So if Matt Schofield can get over the line in that one, it's... An unbelievable performance from him to get to the quarters. Yeah, and luckily he just played a decent shot there to develop his balls, and he's not out of the woods yet. But it looks like he's, it looks like he c could and probably should be going tuning up there in sets. Oh boy, with that uh, take hot break again. He, it, he hasn't even caught them that well for him. No, no, he hasn't. Um, He's caught them a little bit thin. You can see the way the cue ball comes off. It's a great break. The the power he generates is just mind-blowingly good. He's still made a ball, hasn't he? He's still made a ball. He's still got a chance. So Johan Attard is uh, a set-up against Chris Boron. Yellows are delicious here, actually, looking at it. Yep, a set-up, but 3-2 down. Yes. Attard's at the table, though. That was 3-1 to Chris Bowen. So Mark Boyle needs to 
He's taking his extension. He's trying to figure out what he wants to do, how he wants to go about it. So he's deciding to go yellows. Has he gone too far? This needs to hold up. Is he, is he all right? Look at his body language. He, I think he's... You never know with Mark. Does that mean he's not on it? Or does that mean he's just about got away with it? The smile of a madman, isn't it? Is, yeah. <laughs> is it good or is it bad? You just never know. I think he's just on this. Yeah. And this wants to run. If that's carried on just about enough. It has. That's a dagger. To Oh, I don't know. I think he's okay. Here. I think he could bend it if he needed to. He's all right. He likes it. It is tight. Well, it's fine. if he just needed to pull it, but he needs to obviously screw back with it as well. Yeah, no, he's missed it. Wow. Wow. Well, well, well. There we go. That if it was just a case of bending it slightly to pot it, he gets it 9 out of 10, 95 out of 100. But he needed to get uh, some stun on that to get back for the other two in the in the bottom left. And I think what was quite telling was that he didn't try to bend it. He's actually just misjudged whether he could see it all or not. Maybe he thought he could see more of it than I th he... I think that's the case. Mm. Simon Ward here's only real problem is the one on this bottom cushion. And uh, looks like he's going to try and get on it now. He just needs to not not flick this yellow next to it on the way through. That's, that's good. It's mm. good. It's not great. Oh, yeah. That's... <sighs> he's in... Look, if that yellow's not there, even though he's fairly straight, it, it, it'll, it'll get a bit of top and side on that and get the cue ball out. But this is this is nasty. I think he's just got to leave the straight long, the red nearest the uh, the right centre. I think he's got to play this at pace. He's got to risk missing it. No, I think he's just... Yeah, I think this is the shot. Yeah. Doesn't need to do anything with this. He can play this dead weight. Because we know the pockets take them. You know, if if you're getting... Yeah, but you don't want to play it dead weight, then you'll have no angle. You need to no, stun I think this. You just He's topped it through. He's missed it. He's missed Can't it. help but think that that's a massive, massive moment in this match already. Possibly. I do think he's played that in a way where it's... a semi-safe. Like Mark's got a difficult pot next up. Yeah. No, he has. He has... Um, this is a this is a huge little sequence of events in this game. First set's so important. They all are, but oh, that's brilliant! Just strokes that in like it that was over brilliant. the pocket. Three perfect frames, three breaking finishes, and then one mistake from Boyle, followed by another from Ward. Yeah, I'm not punished. I was a little bit surprised that Simon Ward didn't go after that difficult ball from his first shot. I felt like he had a good angle. Yes, I agree actually. Well, that's not the uh, it's not the best. He's obviously really straight on that and yeah. uh, tried to force and create an angle from from effectively not having a natural one. Needs a nice flick here, I think. This needs to come out Nicely fine here, but it's not far off as bad as that could have gone. No, I think he potted it quite thick. If he'd have potted it a bit thinner, he might have run slightly. The cube might have run slightly higher than it did. And that's Steve for watching on there after playing against Boyle yesterday on this table. Again, oh, again, that could have come out worse but it definitely could have come out better yeah, does he cut it in the corner or the middle I think corner he's going corner one thing you just don't tend to see Mark Boyle do is miss pressure pots no. single ball pots he's uh, I think as good as I've ever seen how costly is that mistake from Simon Ward going to be? Liam Dunster is doing what Liam Dunster does. He leads by two sets to nil against Gareth Hibbert. Yep. The 2016 world champion. 
He's staring down the barrel in that one against the 2022 world champion. Not a bad last 16 match, that. Right. And arguably, Hibbert's the man in form of these two. Well, uh, Dunster was the guy that Hibbert beat. Uh, sorry, Hibbert was the guy that Dunster beat to win his world title. Yep. And I think he did seven clearances off the break. Oh, that was an unbelievable final. On, on live TV in the, the highest kind of pressure situation you'll ever be in. Um, it was the masterclass of all masterclasses. Uh, Hibbert played out of his skin and somehow lost 4-2. Just was against uh, like an irresistible force, really. Oh, no. Simon has sent the cue ball flying off the table, and that is just going to compound the error in the previous frame. Mm. It's just gone from bad to worse because now Mark Boyle is heavy favourite for this set. Yeah, he's... Uh it's almost like he's taken his frustration that last frame out and given given that break the extra 10%, jump the white off the table, disaster. Disaster. Disaster for Matt Schofield as well. That score in the top left of your screen suggests that it's Lee Shepard who's taken that second set. Back to parity in that one. Johan Attard is three each in the second set as well. Now against Chris Byron. Johan's leading that one by one set to nil, is he? Yes, he is, yeah. Mark's taking his free shot there to clear a yellow off the table, but he will be going reds here. Bit of a tester, this first one. But as long as he gets round past all the yellows on the way back out. He needs to stay away from that yellow. Oh, he's just far enough. He's Is not he? got this table yet, has he? Is he? Can he definitely get through to that red? I'm sure he can see, see it to A little hit, bit of swerve, he? maybe. It's almost unmissable, I would say, to be honest. But that's a bad shot from Mark. It's oh, it's swerve. quite a big swerve. Yeah. He's nailed it, but he hasn't come out on the ball he wanted to. He wanted to be on the one down the rail next. That's now very thin. Can't really play that shot. No, it would probably love to play the one he's right behind into the top corner as well, but the yellow's in the way. So he's only really got that as a cut into the middle. Wow! I can't believe that hasn't gone in. He's human. I thought it was in all the way. Uh, Simon Moore can't believe his luck. No, this is this is a, this would be such a steal because you go off the table with the break. So, all about a lot this, to do here. All about this yellow that he's bridging over now. He needs to leave himself an angle. To get on this. That's pretty good, I think, is it? Don't know if he was playing to leave the yellow off the red into the corner. Because if he's right behind it, I guarantee you that's the shot he's playing. I think he is still going to play that. Or he can screw into it off of the uh, yellow in the left middle, but you don't know how that's going to come out. So You're right, this is the shot. Here we are. That looks pretty good to me. Great shot, Simon That's Ward. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Just just slightly off angles to where he'd want to be. He's gonna have to play a, a positional shot that could go wrong in going from the bottom of the table to the top. So the yellow at the top of the table that he's just released, if he lands high on that, 
or, or, or so, so so close you know closer to, to where the cue ball is now he's going to run into the red which he doesn't want to do so needs to get fairly close to that bulk line if he can so just run around the back of the uh, around the back of the black quite a natural angle it's all about the pace on this shot this looks pretty good it's pretty good but it's, it's again it's, yeah it's it's slightly this is the problem so he's gonna just have to leave this at a bit of distance which shouldn't be a problem but he'd have loved you know if the cue ball was on the line or the bulk line he's he, he basically can't go wrong i think he can top this and just get a nice flick off the red I don't know just I come think, out i think he's hitting it too thick the right hand side of it bear in mind the white's going to throw as well he's just got Yeah, I mean, that was risky. Yeah, I'm surprised he played it at that pace. He'll take this. I think if he had more time, he probably wouldn't have played that. Yeah. This for 3-2, though, to put him back in control in the first set. <sighs> He's missed it. Wow. Simon Ward. That's only, such a big miss. Only saving grace is the fact that this black is on the side cushion. These two just aren't quite at the races yet. Well, they cleared off the first three breaks. I know. Perfect pull. But and since then, it's... It's like, yeah. One mistake has... has, has uh, and then another's followed. Johan Attard and Chris Boron is 1-1 one, one in sets. As is Schofield and Shepherd, as we know. If it's one nil up in the third set, but he trails two nil, would be a, an unreal comeback that from him. But if anyone can do it, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, he's the man. But uh, how's Mark Boyle's nerves? This one requires concentration. That's going to really hurt Simon Ward. Look really hurt. And he may not have a chance to atone for that. Mark Boyle to break next up. That could be absolutely massive in the context of this match. Yes, I, I think it will be. See the great shot Simon's played there to to dislodge that yellow. And just a horrible little shot queuing off the cushion. Really it was a it was a twitchy one though, wasn't it? it yeah, it's one of them <laughs> if you had two yellows left and you had to knock it in and you were playing to come round two cushions, you'd probably just stroke it in, but you because you, you Sometimes when you feel like you haven't got another ball to play on, the single ball pots feel a bit more difficult. It's a weird psychology, but... Boyle getting the cue ball ever so slightly airborne there, but not as much as Simon Ward in the previous frame. Yeah, and if the pool gods do exist, <laughs> um, they'll give you a layout like this after Simon Ward's just missed that black. These reds are fairly simple, to be honest. Fairly dot to dot. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a messy looking table, but when you actually step back and, and take a view... You've got one plant to play in the right centre pocket. Yeah. And that's about the only semi-difficult shot on the table. Yeah, you see Mark Boyle's played a, um, t taking his extension, just figuring out his route, but there's a number of different ways he could go about this clearance. As you see there, Schofield and Shepherd now one each. Actually, one nil to Shepherd in the third set. A 
This one you would think is almost certainly going to be 1-0 to Mark Boyle. I don't think that's exactly as intended, but he's got so many different options on the table still that not really likely to matter. Yeah, his last three will want to be left middle, right middle, and then the one next to the black, so wants to get back across. Yeah, that's perfect. Now he can play the one bottom right. Stun the cue ball back to roughly where it is now. Don't see many players with the old pouch these days, do you? Got the old kangaroo's pouch for his chalk. You don't know it's a rare si it's a rare sight that isn't it? Mm. The school. equivalent of like a pocket protector for a pen. When was the last time you saw anyone? I don't even know what that is. Little, if you've got a breast pocket on your shirt, yeah, it's a little bit of plastic that goes over it, and then you put your pens over that so it protects the pocket. It's a similar principle. Sounds awful to me. It's quite a it's quite a geeky sort of nerdy thing to have worn. Yeah, I've, I've never heard of that in my life. Pocket protector. Anyway, Mark Boyle's taking the first set. Um, can't help but think that um, Simon Ward's going to be absolutely kicking himself there because he had a chance to go three one up in that set and didn't. Um, albeit not an easy one, but he had a chance to go three one up and and and, and fluffed his lines. And then at two each, uh, as Mr. Black to go three two up. I mean, Simon Ward there should really have won that set four one, and um, and he's ended up losing it four two. That's going to be tough to come back from psychologically and 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 uh, physically in 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 way that the fact that Mark Boyle is an absolute machine and uh, you, you're not going to carry on getting many mistakes from him. See over there, Chris Bowron looks like he's like he's uh, just run out of position there against Jeroen Attard. It's now one set each. Getting into the nitty gritty. Byron lining up a sort of skill shot style here, where he's going to play that red into the yellows and pot his own red at the same time. Looks like it. Mark Boyle's just about to break, but he's gone for the double. double. He's missed it. That turns out of his seat. All right, another Mark Boyle break. Another Mark Boyle successful break. <laughs> he's made a ball every single time yeah. so far. Look, it's ominous. Look at that for a layout. Ominous. I mean, not the, not absolute gimmies, but reds or yellows. I think he gets them both. Yeah. His level, the way he's playing. Personally, I slightly favour reds. I think. I think, I think you take so. the take the one in balk, and then you take the one along the rail, and just push out for the. Over towards the what? Get the cube over roughly towards where it is now. Yeah, and then and then from there, you're pretty much done, aren't you? He's going yellows, is he? Yeah, I, I it's an argument for both. I'm, I'm not going to argue with it. No, no, no. <laughs> no. We'll take the two on the cushion now. Just needs to uh, not leave himself straight on this. It's one of the only things that can go wrong. That was perfect. Just drift across. Again, not straight. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to put so much side on it to get straight, wouldn't you? Yeah. I think there is some. Mark's left his chalk on the table there. He's forgot about his pouch. Maybe it was, maybe it's sort of his hips up against the table, where his pouch normally. He didn't want the extra. Yeah, I, I don't know. but 
Something from the kangaroo's pouch, knocking a red and fouling. Is it a Scottish thing? Do you think it's like the equivalent of a sporran on a kilt? Don't know what a sporran is. Oh, Dan. <laughs> the thing that sits on the front of a kilt. It doesn't interest me, so <laughs> I don't know anything about it. I know what a kilt is. <laughs> That's not how... <laughs> That's how my world works. <laughs> if it doesn't interest me, I know nothing about it. Like, uh. a, like a sci-fi movie. I won't give it the time of day. It's not happening. So it doesn't even get a trailer out of me. So uncultured. No. Oh, no. Slightly run out of position here. I, I don't know if the yellow that he's closest to... It must go. Into, oh no, no, I don't think not. it does. No, because he's come far enough. That's a great just, shot. He's just about got there, hasn't he? Yeah. It's a, it's a better shot than it looks at because he, he needs to... If he hits it too hard, it's going to skid a little bit and he's actually going to take a bit of pace out the white ball. Um, weird as it sounds, he's, he's timed that really well. Crucial as well, being like, obviously, first first, um, first frame in this set. Yeah. Is to just watch the cue ball a little bit here. Because he can't really dig into the white. See him play this at a bit of pace, actually. No, that's fine. He's right behind it. Wasn't worried. 1-0. This is where it's tough psychologically for uh, Simon Ward. Had a chance. The last shot he played was uh, a black to go three two up in the previous set. Marks cleared those last few balls, and then broken cleared twice in a row because the start of the new set was Mark Boyle's break. So he's he's actually been sat down for sat down for two and a half frames here, um, just feeling the pain. You can see his his ranking there of 18 is a little well, very misleading. Um, He's he's easily top eight, uh, Simon, but he's um, just not played every single event this year. I think like work commitments and stuff like that's got got in the way. Anyway, he's got a reset. He is very good mentally, Simon. Doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't. He's not a panicker. He's very good mentally. He's made a ball. One problem area, whether you go reds or yellows, is the red and the yellow together, top right hand side of the table. It's going to be the key to this frame. Lee Shepard's now 2 nil up in the third set against Matt Schofield. Johan Attard is 1-0 up in the third set against Chris Bowron. Both of those matches are one set each. Dunster's one each in the third set. Against Gareth Hibbert. But Liam win it is winning 2-0. Next match is coming up at 3 o'clock. Jake... New Love against Rich Swaffield, Craig Brown against Mark Farnsworth, which you're going to see on the stream table. Dean Shields against Amr Riyad Abdelati from Morocco, and Andy Crowsdale against Liam Roberts. So Simon running out of options here to go into this yellow he possibly leave himself a double I don't know if, I don't know if the double goes he I wonder if there's a safety to be played here to um, cushion first rest into the yellow glue the white to the yellow 
I think that's the shot, you know. He's looking at it. Just needs... It's, it's a delicate little one. You need to glue the white to the yellow. The red's going to contact the cushion. That's a great shot. Perfect. Tap of the table from Mark. Would have liked to have uh, pushed that red slightly further up the cushion. But either way, it's uh, definitely advantage Simon Ward in this frame. made a hit and I think that's as good as it could have come out because I don't think the yellow passes the red into the corner <coughs> pocket the one he's closest to so a very good response unless it does go maybe it does oh it went it went alright but he's just pushed the black safe and I don't think he's on not sure if he can just see the yellow that's on the bulk line. If he can, it's not too bad. He's just going to have to find a way to leave himself a double on the on, on the black. And if he can leave the white where it is now, it's like a 9 out of 10 double. It's a big moment, sis. No, wasn't on it. So, just laid the gauntlet down to Mark. So, go on then. Clear these up if you can. Not choosing to attack. Thought Hard to blame him, him for that. Yeah, I thought we might see him play the red in the middle of the table into the middle pocket, but just played a safety. No snooker. Not not even sure he was intending to snooker him or if he needed to snooker him, but he hasn't got one. But uh, hasn't really left anything. Oh, oh. Disaster. disaster for Simon Ward. I think that was a great effort as well. It was a great effort. I think he's just tried to get the cue ball in behind the yellow there. I think that was the plan. I don't think he was after the double. It's just roughly somewhere up there, yeah. Now that's an interesting shot from Mark because it means he's playing another safety. Um, I thought we might just choose to play the red into the eight ball and, and go game. Yeah, or flick off the side of the red, um, pushing the red out towards the opposite side of the table, the one he's next to now, and then just flick the the, the black out with a white. But yeah, it's just uh, taking it easy. No rush. Just opens up the possibility of a Hail Mary, doesn't it? But Well... <laughs> You can see he, he was in two minds whether to push the yellow, the, the the red fully out, but didn't want to leave the swerve for for Simon. And also, if Simon does somehow get lucky and pot this yellow, um, the black doesn't go down the cushion. So. Still left him something to to think about. It's not not easy from here. Yeah, I, I, I sort of feel like a little bit. The last time Mark was in this position with the free shot and the free visit, he he was actually in a better position than now, and yet now it looks like he's going to go for it. Yeah. So, oh, well, I think <laughs> these reds, these two reds uh, that are touching each other, they go in. One goes into the middle, which then releases the other. So actually, it's a little bit easier than it looks. Yeah, you can see right, from yeah. that angle actually, so not too bad. So 
Simon doesn't look happy. I mean, he's very calm anyway, so he, he would hardly be sat there. He really doesn't show emotion. Yeah, he would hardly be sat there grinning from ear to ear if he was winning this match, but he's uh, it's about as much as uh, emotion as you're ever going to see from Simon. has now left himself on that red nearest the right centre just flick this in and it releases ev everything out yeah, interesting he's not he's not got on that red sooner I don't know if that was his plan. I think he wasn't didn't quite have the angle to stun behind it last time round. Otherwise he would have done. Just still not out of the woods yet in this frame. I think if you're right behind the red into the left middle, it does go. You don't want to be playing it from any sort of distance though. No, I, I mean, if you just drop this one in, basically got the choice. He's a bit straight. This is... I'm surprised he stunned that because you know you see a, a little if he's little nod a little shake of the head there the tiniest shake of the head yeah he's screwing all the way back down table and back up now yeah good shot but he secured it like a dream yeah didn't have to play that didn't there was no need to leave it that difficult no no no, no mistake but he's um it does feel like all of the players are slightly struggling with the conditions on the stream table this weekend week so far well, you wouldn't mind struggling like this <laughs> yeah well yeah quite 2-0 this match is getting away from Simon now uh, scores on the doors so Dunster's 2-0 up but Hibbert's 2-1 up in this set oh no what have we got here? Clutch little shot here. Tricky. Tricky from Hibbert. Ha oh, like ha that. That's a beauty. Right, just uh, quite, quite an easy black here, but a bit of distance. Don't want to kick or anything like that. And this to go 3 1 up in the set. It's to come back on. It is. It could well be. Could well be. Now, uh, around, around the grounds, can I say that? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah good yeah, phrase that. I like around it. Around the grounds on table two. Uh, Schofield and Shepard are locked at they're two each and one each. I think we're about to see it. Yeah, one each in sets. Uh, that's table. That's table three, which is going to be for Jake Newlove and Rich Swaffield later. So table two there, yeah, it's one each in sets and two each in this set. So real crucial times in that game. And over on the other table, Chris Bowen and John Johan Attard, a uh, one each in sets and one each. That's his full name, is it? John Johan. John Johan. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought I got away with that. Yeah, no. No, I, I, no. I wasn't letting you. No, cheers. Not, not getting away with it. Mark Boyle's, Boyle's with got away with one there, hasn't he? Well. Almost gone in off into the corner. Yeah. But has he left himself? He's got a thin snick of a yellow into the middle. Yeah. I'd, I'd Just on the red into the corner. I think I think he's actually all right. Just. I think he's going to have to take the yellow on. I think the red... It's a thin cut. The red is risky. I don't know. I think if, if he no, can see the red not. into the top left, he, the white's not enough. No, it's not. No, so it's I think that's the shot. Missable, though. Yeah, a bit of a tester first up. You don't mind playing it at 2-0 up uh, in, in, in the set, though. Especially when you won them up in sets two. Yeah, certainly easy. I kind of feel like if this goes in, this is 3 0. And it has. Heart of the pocket. 
And it should be 3-0. Yep. yep. Um, the only other sort of slight issue I can see is the the red closest to that racking line, if you like, doesn't go bottom right. So he needs to leave himself the right angle on the one above that to the bottom right. Yeah. So it, it's probably worth trying to get on that now and then leave the one in the centre to the last. Because he's got a lovely angle just to stun down table. Mm. Um, but if he does sort of overdo it, he's still got the, the middle pocket as a backup. Yeah, I would love to be... Would love to be just there. there. <laughs> yeah. Just there. That's it. Just do. there will do. Yep. Just top the white through a couple of inches. Almost drop this in kind of dead weight, actually. No, he's having a little think. He's going to... Got so many options here. Shepard 3-2 up against Matt Schofield now in that set. It's a great comeback that from Lee Shepard because he was a set down and was he set down and three one down? Uh, no, he was he was a set down but three nil up. So oh, and, and just got out of the woods, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. It looked like uh, Schofield. Because then it went three all. Set. Yeah. Yeah. Talking of being three nil down, so Simon Ward's likely to be in a set. Didn't have enough angle, deciding to play this long. what they're all playing for world title not the iPad who left that there honestly but there's pickers isn't it pickers iPad yeah yeah lazy He got his back arm going through that. It has not helped him. Although, if you are going to break dry, you want it to be like that, didn't you? That is the way to do it. Yeah. Much choice there for Mark Boyle, but uh, just rest into the yellow and kind of say over to you, Simon. Be the same again, won't it? Surely, probably. I suppose at three nil down, the one thing you would say is that Simon can afford to throw caution to the wind a bit more. And and likewise at three nil up, Mark Boyle can afford to dangle the carrot for Simon and say, "I'll give you a difficult chance. I'll let you go first, and you know if you really want to, yeah, the pressure's on you, kind of thing." Yeah. Uh, 
he's done exactly that. He's kind of said to Simon, okay, I'm going to leave you a tricky yellow. I'm going to leave you a tricky red. I mean, and, and to be fair, what, what safety has he got now, Simon? There, there is none, really. Um, no obvious one. Uh, Simon taking on reds by the looks of things. Still got demons of the uh, long miss black that he missed. Long black that he missed, sorry, in uh, at two each in the first set. See next up. I uh, can the tell you. East. I can tell you at this point that Simon Ward has now missed more balls in this match than he did in his last 64 match, which I'm not bitter about. No. Why would you be? Yeah. Nice shot from Mark there. I think he's left himself a really nice angle. To go into this red, yeah. Almost wants to split the yellow and red. Yeah. Push that push that red down the cushion. He'd love to probably actually flick the yellow first. Just nudge the red down the cushion just two or three inches. Ooh. Not quite. Not quite, yeah. If he'd have just flicked the yellow first, he'd have uh, he'd have caught that red a lot fuller and brought it down the table. But it has brought it out into a more possible position. Yeah, and if um, you everything the, goes now, it's yeah. it's done the job basically. It has, yeah. And if you can get the white uh, quite close to where the black is, then you know it's, a, it's still quite an easy pot. Now, is he going to play on it now? Off the uh, red in the bottom left. Swing across quite a natural angle with a trace aside. Try and land on it. No good. No, perhaps misjudged the slide of the cushion there. Slight, yeah, well, slight, slightly too much side as well. Still in some sort of position here. I mean, the. <laughs> So the red that he's going to take on next, you would think, the one to the left of the cue ball, if he can stun that and he sort of gets a half ball contact on the yellow, it might work out quite nicely for him. Mm, it's a bit too full. Yeah, so what would you do now? I mean, do you, do, you, do you double it? But how are you getting the cue ball out? I'm not sure you can. Because you, you, it's almost a bit of a cut on the double. Would you play the long red and try and get close to the black? I'm not sure what angle he's got there. He's playing that, so... Yeah, I think he's just going to draw the cue ball back a foot. Is he straight enough? Ooh, he wow. Is. Has he tried to draw it back a foot, or has he played intentionally on the double there? I think... I don't know. I, th I think he's probably tell. played to cut that. Yeah. Because if he can cut that in, he can come twice across and play the, the black long. So this is getting more and more difficult for Mark. And... He's reliant on luck now. If he plays the double, yeah, which he's going to. He's going to flick into the yellow that's on the side cushion. Without a doubt. And then I can't see how it's going to come out good. Well, it would have come out all right if he'd have... Yeah, he was on it. He'd have made it, to be fair. Right then, Simon. Boomerang Ward. 3-0 yeah. down in this set. It's just the sort of thing you'd do. I'm sure in last year's world final, he did exactly that. I'm sure he was a set and 3-0 down, and he won the second set 4-3. I'm sure he did. He was definitely 3-0 down in one of the sets against Clint and won it. That's the beauty of this format as well. Yeah, it is. I mean, it can it can change so quickly. Mm. So quickly. Well, well, Simon as well was 2-1 up in the first set, lost it 4-2, so he's actually on a on a streak of six frames on the bounce that he's lost here. He needs to build a bit of confidence back. Be 3-2 to Hibbert in the third set against Liam Dunster. That was quite a long frame. It was... Um a good couple of frames ago we looked over at that one, wasn't it? And it was 3-1. Yeah. And 
Matt Schofield, three all again in the third set. So oh, a massive. huge frame coming up. Perfect position. Simon Ward gets on the board in frame four in this second set. Can't quite see Simon's mum behind him, can you? But she is there, just behind the backdrop with Mark and Simon's face on it. Bronnie, tournament director, doing a fantastic job as always. Great job as always. Cool, calm, collected. Always got the snacks. And there's always snacks at the top yeah, table. Yeah, yeah. There's some Haribo stuff somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Like munching on peanuts yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, always yeah, if you if you if you if you need a you can quite often take one as well and she doesn't see. And if she <laughs> looks away you can always you can always nick a Werther's original offer without her knowing as well because she got so many dotted around. Yeah, yeah. Just have one of them. Oh there she is. There she is that Hi Bron. Hello Bron. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she, she does an amazing job. Absolute legend. Legend of the game. Yeah. Look at that. One. Lee Two Shepard's one taking Lee the Shepherd. lead. Yes. Bowron as well is... Uh, looks like what could be a crucial frame there because you see the last red hang in there which means that Johan was in first. And Johan's had his chance in that match. That'll now be 2-1 to right. Bowron in that third set. Yep, there you go. Look, look at that. Real tussle on the outer tables. That's Mark Boyle. Can we see our first dry break? Nope. No. <laughs> we can't. No chance. And, uh, well, goodbye yellows. You play the red onto yellow first. And it then... Could <sighs> be... It's just... It's a lovely, lovely layout. Yeah, it really is. He's gonna have he's gonna have one positional shot really from transition from the bottom half of the table to the top and if he gets that right it's it's frame over, it's set over. Let's just um needs to think about what he's gonna do with the cue ball here though. Uh it doesn't I don't know if the I don't think he has to make the plant. We can no no she hasn't got but we can see it's a bit better there so yeah just doesn't want that red to interfere with anything else he's played that at a good pace now just needs to be low doesn't want to be it's really really important here that he's he'd love the cue ball to be where it is now next shot but if he doesn't come low enough he's not going to be able to get into the top half of the table so really this is the cre this is the key to the frame this shot Needs to be at least straight on this one in the middle, slightly off. And he's taken all of the the by by playing into the cushion and using the cushion, he's taken that completely out of the yep. equation. Made the pot harder. Yep. But yeah, and I think I think he's all right here to just drift up with a natural angle. I don't think he's quite running into the red. No, I think worst case you go a bit far and you land on the one on the balk line. Um, he's missed it. He's missed it. He's human. What we're we seeing here. You know what? That was so unexpected that I'd actually taken my eye off the object ball. I was yeah. watching for where the cue ball was going. You you potted it for him. Yeah. Mm, it's kind of you. I know. I'm I'm, I'm a nice guy. Yeah. So the last frame was a more difficult chance than this, but we've watched Mark Boyle take out tricky finishes and difficult finishes for fun this last couple of years, but he hasn't. And these were quite easy by his standards, and he's he's messed it up. 
Yeah, I, it's going to be 3-2. It's one of those where after the break, you chalked it up for Mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mentally. It's going to be 3-2. It'll be Simon's break next. If he makes a ball, likely to be 3 all. The boomerang doing boomerangy things. <laughs> and that is, you know, that is where the nickname comes from. He is, uh, yeah. I feel like it's something that we haven't seen from him in the last few years as much. Well, he's, he's not behind very often. No, but, he's, <laughs> you know, he, 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 he made his name as a youngster, didn't he, more? Yeah, yeah. He um, could find, he, he, he would almost go through the gears when he was behind in a match. Um, yeah. Surprised he played that with that much side because he's left that really straight now. Yeah, I think you can manipulate the angle a little bit. There you go. 3 2. 3 2 and Simon to break. Oh, spring in his step. Yep. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't normally do this, but um, I've just had a text from my mum. Yeah. Says Simon's mum might be there, but I'm still listening. <laughs> so you know, what you've got to say hello to your mum. Uh, apparently, I have now. Yeah. You can't do shout outs, can you? I know. It's it's not something that I would normally do, but oh. it made me laugh. <laughs> Hibbert's taken the third set. Third set. We have a potential comeback in progress on the stream table. Do we have a potential comeback in progress on table four? So Lee Shepard is 2-1 uh, up in sets and 1-0 and, and, and up in the fourth set. Boron still 2-1 up in the third set against Joanne Attard. Tight matches. Needs a ball. He's got a couple. He's got three. What do they look like? Oh, it's a bit messy. Slightly messy. Yeah, look. Reds or yellows, there's, there's a couple of issues. All the yellows go. Mm. That that most difficult yellow nearest the eight ball. You land right behind that, you can drop that in the middle. You know, it wouldn't be a it wouldn't be the worst last ball ever. But it's getting there. Yeah, and you could potentially get to it from the one that's on the bottom cushion. Yeah. But uh looks like he might be going reds, is he? He'll get you hers, isn't he? I think yellows have to be the colour. There's too much to do on. You've got the the red on the bottom cushion, which is really isolated. The red on the right hand side, which is also really isolated. There's no way to attack them. Yeah, he's going yellow, so he's taking his extension. I really don't think. Is he going to try and get across now? If he had a little bit more angle, he could maybe try and stun over towards that black. As it is, he's kind of, well, I don't know if he's in no man's land here, because if he just tops it through, he's going towards the yellow. Uh, so, is he playing this with rakes of side to try and disturb it? He can get into it on these grippy cloths. Horrible shot to play, though. Looks like he's loading it up. Yeah. He is. Well... I think that's really good, you know. He can play this one down the cushion, punch the white back out to the centre of the table, and if he can leave himself the perfect angle to play the yellow into the middle, he can drift the white into the black. This could be perfect, but this next shot's crucial. If he leaves himself the right angle on this next shot, yep. he's pretty much there. So he's decided to play it into the corner. Okay, so he's, he's, he's now drifting down to the side. So he wants to drift across to the well, to the he, rail. If he can rest into the red, the yellow's going to go into the middle, but you don't want to glue to the yellow. There's a lot can go wrong with this. Needs a bit of luck. Yeah, I think he's just sort of soft screwing almost. So just just below that right jaw there. He's played into it. Yeah, it's just if he's, he's stuck, stuck right on it. Yeah. I don't think that goes. No. Cushion first, he's going to get close. He is going to get close, cushion first. He's looking at can he cut double it. It's always the danger though. 
This is such a huge shot. Oh, he's, he's made there, it. Isn't he? He's made it. What a shot, Simon oh, wow. Ward. Wow. <laughs> this is not easy either. That's an astonishing shot. If he makes this. Oh, we've well, got well, a game well. on our hands well, here. Well, well. Well. Look at this. Pace he's had to hit that. And, and, and that black wasn't easy. You're 3 2 down. Yeah. 3 2 down. Uh, if you miss this, you're 2 0 down in sets. That Absolutely. That's that's a. Uh, a set saving shot potentially yeah set saving clearance over to you Mark Boyle you, th you were three nil up you've had a half chance and you've had quite an easy chance go begging now uh, now what have you got we still haven't seen a dry Mark Boyle break still haven't seen one we see Gareth Hibbert's back at the table as well Likely to, likely to take a take a one nil lead in this fourth set. That was Dunster's break as well. So Dunster's break and sort of a break of serve potentially in that one. Mm. Right back we go. Most important break of the match so far for Mark Boyle. Hasn't had a dry one yet. Hasn't had a dry one in about four years. <laughs> Oh, is it off? He's in off. Now then. Now we've got a game on our hands. Well, well, well. Simon is immediately and intently studying that if red. that red goes, he's going to flick this other red over the middle pocket and these are gone. Yeah. These that. are easy. And from that camera angle we just had... That, that's a poor break. That red goes from, for me. That, I think it does. That's a poor break as well from Boyle because he's actually gone straight. Um, he's actually gone straight in off into the corner, you know, side cushion, but he's hit too low on the side cushion. Yeah. And it was going towards that corner. Okay, it got bundled in, but it was going in anyway. Wow, wow, wow. It's going to take a little bit of time here, Simon, to just figure out his route and... So many different ways you could go about this clearance because they are very easy, the Reds. I don't want to curse him, but um, there are so many ways you could go about this. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is just a, a hold your nerve type finish rather than yeah. there's work to do. There is no work to do here. Well, they're not going to pot themselves. Probably have a bit of butterflies now, Simon. Just maybe, maybe more than more than he's had in the entire match so far. And understandably, because let's be fair, he has chucked in a couple of shockers. Yes. Um, but they, these normally focus your mind. You know, if you uh, now is he is he going to take this one into the middle now? I think you go the one closest, the one he's closest to in the left centre. But no. Yeah, that would have been my last ball, but then everyone sees things differently. I, th I think because they are, I don't want to keep saying it, but because they are so easy, there's so many ways you could go about this. Leave the one that's uh, bottom right until last, which it looks like he's doing. No choice now. Yeah. You could have gone about this so many ways, as long as you just don't do anything stupid. Don't, don't miss anything easy. I think the next, <laughs> sounds obvious, but the, the last positional shot is now key because there's a bit of work to do with it. You mean this one now? No, I mean this one now. Well, just doesn't want to leave himself hamper queuing. Yeah. So just which is quite easy to do. That's what I mean. It, and it's also yeah. easy to just get into it a little bit too much well, and screw it rather than just stun it. into this a little bit too much. He, he wanted to be punching up table. Yeah, he's fine. He's fine. 
trying to make a problem when there isn't one. Well, he missed a not dissimilar one to this earlier, but he was oh, a lot closer to the rail. This is the boomerang, fully boomeranging. It's Simon it, Ward. Boomeranging? It is now. It is now. Contact the OED, we'll get it in the dictionary. Simon Ward has taken the second set from nowhere. He was 3-0 down and looked like he was out of luck in this match. Let's be honest, it looked like he was on his way out of the tournament. And also, uh, uh, if someone's going to come from 3-0 down against Boyle, the way he's playing at the minute, you, you, you kind of feel like it's going to be dry breaks. and you know. But, but Mark has missed a, a, a half chance at 3-0. And then he's missed quite an easy one at 3-1. Like, that's not, that's kind of not. And to be fair, Simon's then, you know, broken, cleared, and then cleared off of Mark's um, break in the decider. But, I don't know, we're seeing some chinks in the armour of uh, Mark Boyle. And also, we've made a big thing, and or a big thing has been made about, the stat that Mark Boyle has never got past the last 16 at World Championships. And there's no way that he doesn't know that. 100%. E exactly. Um, he absolutely knows that. So now, at that stage of the competition, at the stage where he's never got past, to throw away a 3-0 lead in the second set is, you know, horror film territory for Mark Boyle, isn't it? It's it is. Shepard. I, I really enjoy watching Lee play. He's got a real sort of compact style. He doesn't spend too long thinking about things. He doesn't sort of take a huge stride into the shot. Just a little shuffle of the feet and he's bang. He's there and he's ready. <laughs> As I say that. As you say that, he gets <laughs> down and gets straight back up. Yeah. But he's um, yeah, he really nicely. You know, he calls himself the pint-sized powerhouse, and I think that's a a pretty apt description. Don't know whether he gave himself that nickname. I would lose a little bit of respect for him if he did, if I'm honest. Where did you get your nickname from? Slim. Yeah. I mean. The, most of the viewers may never have seen me but if they did it would be pretty obvious <laughs> <laughs> but who gave it to you uh, or right, did so you give it to yourself no 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 um, <laughs> I used to play pool with a guy called Steve and he was really short so I started calling him Lofty Yeah. and so for the same reason he started calling me Slim ah I see and that's the uh, yeah that's where that came from yeah. but mine's not a mine's not a you know, it's not a braggy nickname, is it? Whereas pint-sized powerhouse, there's a bit more. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you're, you're fully big in yourself. You know, if you call yourself the tornado or something, then yeah. you you better be good. Yeah. Um. Well, what are you going to do, though? Because, like, you know, in a year's time, when you're obviously uh, running half marathons and you are fit and slim <laughs> and trim, what are you going to... You can't carry on with the slim name, can, then, can you? No, I'll, I'll have to call myself Chunk. Chunk, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, your so your nickname is Double D, Dan Davy. Yeah. Obviously, is that actually a nickname that anyone has ever called you, or is it just it actually, you needed it for a tournament? No, it, it actually came from when I worked at a um, place called Select Car Leasing. Actually, sponsored one of the IPA events a few years ago. It came from when I worked there. My old manager, who knows nothing about Paul for some reason just used to call me Double D so everyone in my team called me Double D I don't know why and then somehow that got around to it's not cup size then absolutely not no absolutely not <laughs> just checking it, I, I assumed mean, it was Dan Davey you correct know, well you done know, yeah. well done like a private investigator <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was it was from that so uh, and if for some reason it then I don't know. I don't know if someone then in my pool team started because a, a lot of us worked together that used to play in the same pool team, and then before you know it, that's it. I suppose it, you know. And I like playing doubles. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm. I've discovered that already. Yeah. So I d yeah, I don't know really how. I think that's how it came about. Anyway, you don't give your own nicknames, do you? 
no, no it's, it's right, cardinal rule isn't it you it's can't. a cardinal rule yeah can't give yourself a nickname there's no way that gareth hibbert called himself the godfather is there you'd like to think not no I, to be so i I'd, think i'd never talk to him again if he did i think i think he might have given himself the no, godfather he didn't. actually he no didn't. but i think it, i think so he told me that he gave himself the godfather because he was toning down his actual nickname because his actual nickname locally in his local snooker and pool league <coughs> is God. God. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I think he did give himself the Godfather, but he he actually was legitimately toning it down rather than from God. Because you can't call yourself God on TV, can you? It's the only acceptable solution, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. God. <laughs> I mean, what a nickname that is. God. Just you've like got to be. You've got to have completed it, mate. Just yeah. You, I mean, he has so back to back one four sevens in his local league. I'd you can see why they call him it. I'd stick with God then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's get God back out. Gareth God Hibbert. Imagine that. It's better than his opponent. The duster. Yeah. It's like calling yourself the cleaner, isn't it? I don't like it. He could do. He could do better, can't he? Yeah, the duster. I think so. Because the dust is also an a actually a, um, it's a, it's a car. Oh, the car the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The cheapest it's car. It's not money the best one, is it? No. No, it's the cheapest car that money can buy. Dacia Duster. Maybe you should call yourself like the Ferrari or something. Yeah, but then copyright infringement. And oh, it's all right for a Duster, though. Uh, yeah, I think it's nice to be honest, because who would want that? Yeah, yeah. You can't. Um, yeah, no. We should talk about some pool because Simon Ward's made a brilliant break here and is absolutely flying. He's just run out of position though. He has. He, he might be playing this red off the yellow into the corner pocket, you know. I th it's a tricky one and it's missable, but I think he can screw out of this and get back into position from it. And it will run inside. And to bounce. That's pretty good. Yeah, that'll do nicely. It's very good. It runs any further. He's slightly hampered queuing. I mean, that's spot on. <coughs> really good. That is the shot of a guy that's just won a set from 3-0 down. Yep. Boomeranging. Got a little that's spring such a step. beautifully played shot as well. That actually went a little bit far. Actually. Yeah, but you you watch a, an amateur play that shot, mm. and you watch even most of the pros play that shot, and I think they drift it in and drift the cue ball across the yellow. Yeah. It's such a confident way to play it. And it's you're right, he's overdone it a bit. It's just, uh, it's just a little shake of the head. Still got plenty of options. You can run down and play the black into the middle. Yeah. Play it with the top and right and swing it around two cushions. Or just, just drop it in and actually be in. perfect on it. So it, it wasn't that bad, was it? <laughs> it wasn't, no, but I, I I feel what he's done there. The, the amount of times I've done that where I think, oh, I can't hold that. <laughs> and then you get down and think, and you look. Oh, we, we both looked at it. We saw it and we said, oh, he's yeah. got that position there. But y y you can hold it a little bit more than you think. He's ahead in the game. He's ahead. Yep. I mean, 20 minutes For ago. For the first time since the very first frame, I think I'm right in saying. Mm. No, he was 2-1 up in the first set. Yeah, you're quite right. <laughs> so the third frame. Yeah. Now, talking of 2-up, Hibbert's 2-up in the fourth set here. The comeback is well and truly on against Liam Dunster. Lee Shepard's going to possibly be the first guy through. Uh, he's 3-1 up in the fourth set, and he leads two sets to one. Yep. The pint-sized powerhouse. Bowen's 3-2 up in that crucial third set against Johan Attard. That'd be big for Chris Bowen as well. Yeah. Boyle's found his break mojo again. Whoa. Yeah. Normal service resumed. Uh, reds or yellows, these are gone. Yeah. Let's talk about something else. <laughs> these are unmissable for somebody of Mark Boyle's quality, the way that he's playing. I agree with the first part of that statement. I broadly agree with the second part. However, no. we thought that. 3-1 up in the last set. <laughs> True. True. And he's not at his absolute best, is he? No. 
He's playing well because he always does. Mark Boyle at a five out of ten can still win, can still find himself in the semi-finals of, of, a, of a tournament. So easily, he, uh, yeah. So, in fact, he'd actually like to not be so straight on this ball, so he could get away from the cushion. Let's wipe his feet a little bit. Maybe I should keep my mouth shut. <laughs> let them play it's not quite over yet is it there's, there's one good shot to play mm. um, it's in a shot's time I think he would have liked to have if he could come up table and take these bottom two now but he, he just didn't quite have the angle it's too straight but we're all human you know and uh, he um, he's played that very well it's perfect drift over in the gap here between the two reds yeah absolutely spot on Normal service resumed. Yeah, and it's, it's a, a rot that will be stopped because that is five on the bounce now for Simon Ward. So well, these matches are, are crazy. You, you see it quite a lot in, in a lot of pool, but I think more so in the sets format. So from 2-1 down, uh, from 2-1 up in the, uh, in the first set, Simon Ward lost six frames on the bounce. Uh... And then from that point, he won five in a row. So it was a hell of a hell of a momentum swing, twice. Yeah, it's it's not actually not that unusual in pool, is it? You know, no. when you watch a big money match or something, and it's a race to twenty-one or a race to thirty or something, you get fours and fives all the time. Yeah, you? you do. Momentum is definitely a... Every single match is in the balance here, apart from the Lee Shepherd one. So he's 3-1 up in the fourth set and he leads 2-1. That's in the balance. That's only one frame from being in the balance, though. Yeah, yeah, I mean... Um, yeah, we've got one all, one all here. Uh, one all between Chris Bowron and Johan. Chris Bowron's three to... Oh, it's three each now three. in that set. So that's going to a deciding frame. Gareth Hibbert's 2 0 up in the fourth set against Liam Dunster. Break, he's made one. Made a couple. He's got options reds or yellows. Is he on the yellow in the middle? Because if not, he's got to take on a really awkward plant first up. I mean, and all of them, and every single red pretty much is on the cushion. Yep. But. Yeah, I don't know. I think I, th I think you might have to go reds here. He is. So this, I mean, it's like a practice drill. This table it really is. You're gonna have to punch this and bring the white across. If you can bring the white across to the uh, towards that right middle pocket, then he. Would you? I, I think I'd be wanting to set the one in Bork next after this. If I could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I think, yeah. Uh, oh, that's not in. It's not in. And it shouldn't be. No. Um, I feel for Simon a little bit there because that break was... It was a good break, but he... Horrible. It was a horrible out. table. Yeah. And now that he's moved that red, he's done all of Mark's work for him, really. And he kind of had to. There was no option there. Yeah, sometimes your hand's forced... I would I would argue that it might have been worth Simon taking on the plant on the yellows first off. But I think... But it was so tough. I well, mean, I, 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 but I, I think the bigger problem was that unless you pay it at a ridiculous pace, that the first yellow looked likely to get tied up with a red. Yeah, because possibly. Because the angle you'd have possibly. actually planted it for. At. Mark's well, got to be careful here not to leave too much angle. He wants to pop this penultimate yellow down the rail and screw back. Um, if he leaves too much angle and he's screwing across to the wrong side of the table, then that could be a problem. That is about as good as you could get. This is a nice angle. You've just got to cue it. Y you've got enough that it's going to pop back away from the cushion, so you're not going to be queuing the I'd next like one to, off the rail. I'd like to not have to use the cushion, though. 
You think? I think you probably will. Yeah, you. Yeah, I know, but I mean, if the cue ball was just slightly yeah, further okay. to the left, he could, it would it would just be about pace control rather than worrying about you know if and when you. And he's just he's just queuing over these reds as well, isn't he? Yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. I, I think it's a nice angle, to be honest. No, it's not bad, um, but like, because I think even if he overhits it, he's not going behind those reds. Mm. Has it got there? Yeah. Really Just. nice shot. Just. Can he dig into it enough to get the cue ball back round the back? I think he can. I think he definitely can. Yeah, he, he, I don't think he can drop it in and play the the eight ball left centre, can he? So yeah, he's really got a cut. He's really got... He needs to get some instant bite on this. Yep. Great shot. Be off the rail. Ooh. Yeah, see, this is... It's in off territory. I think it's just okay. I think if he was a little bit thinner, this, this would be a problem, but it's definitely going to enter your mind. He might have to jack up a little bit here and uh, play this at a bit of pace. He is. Which makes the pot missable. Ah, oh, good shot. Great really shot. Really good shot. Very good. Very, very good from Mark Boyle, and it's a break of serve again. So Mark leads 2-1 in this crucial third set. Talking of crucial third sets. Oh, we're watching it. 3 all. Attard and Boron. Wow. And so Johan is at the table. Lee Shepard's only 3-2 up now in that fourth set. Against and Matt Schofield, Schofield is at the table. And Matt Schofield's at the table. But Johan's played a very good shot there. Is he all queuing though? Doesn't seem too bothered. He's goat there. Straight down. Oh no. Whoa. Whoa, look Whoa at him. that's a big reaction. Look and at you, him. you like can't blame him. Dancing on ice. And I think <laughs> I think he's left Chris Bowron an easy yellow to the centre as well. So Wow. That's a huge miss from Johan. He didn't like that, did he? Mark Boyle. Trying to relieve some of the pressure on himself. His last break was excellent. Still yet to have a dry one. He's gone in off, but still no dry. I mean, that's far from dry. Good grief. That's very wet. <laughs> <laughs> that's a soaking break. Yeah, drenched. Three yellows, no reds. Still a bit of work to do though. Not uh Yeah, it's not straightforward. No, it's really not. Almost too many yellows down. Would like another one up on the table probably to Yeah. Keep you updated on that bow run and uh at our game as and when we can. Hibbert's two one up. In the fourth set against Liam Dunster was 2 0. Well, I was just having a good look at this red. That's a lovely nudge. That right. so yeah, that's, that's a, a tremendous winner. shot. That's one in the frame. That's a frame winner. Yeah. Because he can play the middle of those three now. And all of a sudden, everything goes everywhere. It's amazing how just one little movement of the balls can change the complexion yeah, of yeah. a frame so quickly. that went in 
Gareth Hibbert now 3-1 up on Liam Dunster in the fourth set. Who's Liam going to pray to if it goes through a decider? Not pray to Gareth, can you? There's loads of different gods there, aren't there? Yeah, that's true, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. find a different one. <laughs> Just Google it, there'll be another one. There? Yeah, about to be. And, uh... Byron has just taken the third set against Johan Attard after the ball that we saw him miss slightly hamper queuing by Ron's obviously taking the finish out from there he's, he's, he's a little bit short there isn't he Mark Boyle he need, needed an extra inch or two there just just, just go on a little bit further than that it's not possibly perfect, but I mean he can I'm sure he's going to dig in and make this look very simple but He's slightly out of position. Yeah. Did you check side on this as well? Not easy. Oh, slightly hampered. Uh, it's probably going to leave a bit of distance. It's about as bad as it could be. It that. is. It is. And it's, it's only 2-1 in this set. This is a, you know, this is huge, this. Difference between 3-1 and 2 each. To avoid that yellow. Not behind it, is he? Oh, he's just okay, isn't he? I don't think he is. I think he's got to bend this. From the overhead, it looks all right, but from the angle we just had, I thought it looked like he had to bend that. It's shook his head. It, yeah, the shake of the head, he's got to. There's a bit of swerve coming here. Is there? I think a, a trace of side at least. There it is. There's the trace of side. It's wow. not enough. Wow, wow, it wow. is not enough. And look at the table that Simon Ward has been left with. He is human. And he is showing it. He is under it. And this world championship curse, if you like, on Mark Boyle. Because let's be honest, it is utterly astonishing that he's never got past the last 16. Yeah, I was it's say, almost it's the most amazing stat in pool. Yeah, but it's astonishing that he hasn't. Yeah, yeah, I fine, agree. fine. That you know, understand. There's plenty of great players, mm, yeah. you know, best players in the world that haven't won this. Yeah, but to not get past the last sixteen in six, seven attempts, mm. that is some going. Yeah, and uh, talking of comebacks, so. We've got Gareth Hibbert 3-1 up in the fourth set against uh, Liam Dunster. And now Matt Schofield's back to 3 each from 3-1 down. From being on the brink, 2-1 down and 3-1 in sets and 3-1 down in the set. Did you see that attempted swerve from Mark Boyle? Just didn't get into it quite enough. Some great matches going on here. There is Liam Dunster at the table. Don't know how just how tied up the black is there, and uh, looks like it goes bottom left, doesn't it? Possibly. It seems. It looks like it might go centre as well, actually. Hmm. Because you would think if it went bottom left, he'd be playing the yellow. He's playing next. Next. If that makes sense. So, uh, 
dry bake from Simon Ward, but not really left an awful lot on. Yeah, again, it's a it's a good dry break, isn't it? Yeah, look, you know, this definitely cuts into the middle, but it's very thin, and it's difficult. And you you want yellows. You want yellows as well. Yeah. You want That's yellows, right. like because yeah, if you miss it, you, you you know yellows are yellows are definitely the ball. Now, I mean, does it cut? Is it car? I think it does, you know. I think if there's Cubal's no way that's impossible to cut that yellow in. Cue ball's going close though, isn't it? That cue ball's going all over the place at pace as well. So you know you No, yeah. oh, so Simon doesn't fancy it either. But he wants to get back to the top rail. He may not have come far enough. That definitely cuts now. Well Well it does, but again it's you know, you're still losing the cue ball. Yeah, but is it worth the risk? Not sure what, what safety you can keep playing here, because... Now there's the answer. I'm in Ward's turn to try and find some sort of safety. I mean, Boyle has left a pot on. That's on a red. Yeah, well, yeah, but he's, well, there is a long yellow as well available. Um, but queuing off the rail, that's not going to happen. So can't help but think these are huge moments in this game. That's a great shot. That's a really good shot from Simon. Also put in the uh, slightly easier colour set of yellows. Put one of those safe. Or safer. Yeah, there's food for thought now on both colour sets, which before wasn't the case. Actually, they're, they're a little bit more even now. Well, now, I mean, you've got to go reds, haven't you? Yep. You've got to go reds. Not the easiest clearance you're ever going to get, but you're in first. It's actually... The one that looks most difficult is that one closest to the left centre pocket. And I reckon... And you've got a perfect ball to do it. You get right behind that, you can drop that in the centre. You can. So, this first shot is key. And he's found that gap beautifully. I think he's just having a look now at whether he can land on that that fiddly one in the centre. So if he could stun this one to the left of the, the black spot in Matt Schofield. This for the set. Let's jump to table two. And that's going decider. Well, well, well. From 3-1 down in that set. Lee Shepard does not look a happy boy. No, chucks his glove away in disgust. Simon Ward made the next red. Slightly hampered queuing now. He's a shot. Big, boy, big shot reach. this. Come round into the oh, back a bit. Oh wow, that couldn't have come out much better, could it? That's a peach. It's pretty good. Now, mm, I don't know about after this, does the other red go into the middle? Does so it's still fiddly this, isn't it? I, think, I don't think it's too bad. I think the middle of the three reds that are in a line goes to the bottom right yeah so i think you can just roll the cue ball through here and take that one next possibly can yeah this is one of those like i say i call it like a fiddly clearance yeah it's it just it's loads of little pinpoint shots that you know getting to the to, to the black is not going to be easy because this get nicely on it's not going to be easy it's come half an inch too far now and now has to screw to the side right oh and they can play that one yeah. So, if he can leave himself a cut onto uh, cut onto the red into the left middle, he can yep. drift up table and back over with right inside. 
think he's got a nice angle here just to, to run this through off the side cushion and bounce back off. Yeah. Oh, he hasn't bounced. I'll tell you what, though. He'll, he'll take it. He'll take that because just concentrate on the pot only. The natural angle, just roll this in. Natural angle. You're yep. going to leave yourself... Don't want to go low on the cue ball and flick that yellow. Great oh, shot. Oh, this is superb from S Simon Ward. Slightly hampered, though. Yeah, it's slightly hampered. Just awkward. That yellow is where you want your hand. Yeah. He's going to be queuing down on it a little bit, but nah, straight in. Look, it's over the pocket. 3-2. Wow. What is happening? This is... This would be a comeback for the ages from, from a set and 3-0 down. Yeah. Simon Ward. The boomerang. The boomerang is boomeranging. Chris Bowron is Bowronning. <laughs> <laughs> he's um he's he's one nil up and uh one nil up in the fourth set, two one up. Uh Liam Dunster still three two down. In uh, and he's at the table as well, Bowron. Yep, look, there he is. He is someone that wears his heart on his sleeve. You definitely see a spring in his step when he's uh when he's playing well and he sort of burst a bit onto of the scene, didn't, didn't he? Back in what it was it was when I'd started on the tour, so it was about twenty seventeen, sixteen, seventeen. Bursting bow run. Yeah, he saw yeah. he but he did. He sort of burst onto the scene and then yeah. he he took a few years out. Yeah. Um Yeah, one from the North East, so got a bit of local support. All right, Boyle, this is a this is a big break for you. Just doesn't let him down, does it? It just doesn't let him down. No. I don't know if he's on. I don't know if he's on the easiest of the reds into the left middle. And assuming he's going to go reds, uh, there's I a couple of issues here. Yeah? I think it's yellows. Could be yellows. I Could actually think the the one that's in the middle of the table. I think goes top left, and you stun that in. Yeah, but I don't think the one on the bulk line goes. Mm. Quite. No, maybe from maybe the overhead it looks like it does, but you're right. Maybe could flick it in with a with, with side. Yeah, but you're you're not going to land on anything after that, are you? Because the other one in bulk doesn't go. You know what? It, this is the table of somebody that, you know, when you joke about the poor gods and how you kind of get what you deserve, and when you make mistakes, the run of the ball tends to go against you as well. It feels like one of those tables, you know, like where. Where you've made a couple of mistakes, and um, he'd love that red to have dropped as well, wouldn't he? Oh, I think he'd be happy with this. I think the angle he's got on the yellow immediately to the right of the black, he can bump into the red, and he didn't mean this. Yeah, true. Needs to not glue to the yellows afterwards. Needs to not glue to the yellows afterwards. Third time? Needs to. <laughs> Q over this yellow. Yeah, he's now he got has got he has got an awkward yellow at distance. Um kind of Chinese snookered. And this is tough. He's taking on a plant, is he? He's taking on the plant. Well, I suppose he'll be thinking that uh, if he gets the pocket, that would be a, a yeah. bonus. He's gonna get the pocket, that's not gonna drop, surely. No, but look at the angle Simon's got now on his first red. On this red into the left middle, if ever you wanted a ball to be able to play a skill shot. Yeah, but he's also left him, so he's pushed those two reds together, but he's left an angle on that as well. Mm. He's left an angle on the top of those two reds, where he's going to flick the yellow out of the way. So that's why he's taking this on first. That's a I great like, shot. I like this a lot because he, he it's, it's, it's the intent is to attack yeah. and not to be... Uh, and and. And other players might have played the skill shot and then played safe. Simon's kind of taking the ball by the horns here. Two each. Hibbert Dunster. Top left of your screen. That's back to a, an even game now, surely. Yeah, coin flip. Yep. In fact, possibly slightly in favour of Hibbert because he's got the break. And he's got the momentum. So Simon Ward obviously have a, has a problem here. Yeah, how 
how's he going about this? There's, there's actually a lot of ways you can go about this. You could even leave this red on the right hand side cushion as a double. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, he's missed the pot. Perhaps slightly rushed by the shop clock there. The beeps were going. Maybe. Too many options, maybe. Didn't make up his mind in time. No. I think he knows as well from his expression. He sat there, turning point. That was his That was his chance. That was 2-1. That was 2-1. I mean, OK, he's got the break in the in the decider. Should, should mark clear these, but... And you'd have to think he's probably going he's to. He's probably going to. The only thing that might... Playing his mind a little bit is the red just to the right of the black. You know, is he is he going to be able to get as close to the black as he wants? But let's say this goes three old. Oh, is Simon's angle? break? That's not great. Uh, that's not great. I don't think he's going to enough to punch it in. And he's going to have to be yeah, going to have to punch it. All right. So the speed yeah, control okay. here could. This could go wrong. This could go wrong. It's actually got quite a small window, considering the distance the white's got to travel. Yeah, you, I mean, you could... So you could play it with a bit of right-hand side and throw it sort of narrower. But then... I think his line will be the red. He's under-hit that. Under-done it. He's going to be on it, but it's a thin snick. I think he was worried about overdoing it. Yeah. Oh, well, that's we're still fancying to get this. But it is quite thin. Quite thin. Got it. So it's three each. The well, Paul well, Gods well. theory would suggest that this next break from Simon Ward is going to be dry or in off. Yeah. There is the back of Liam Dunster's head. Looks like he's deep in thought. Clearly got an opportunity of some description in the very first frame of that deciding set. The question is, what colour set's he on? Whichever one it is, he doesn't like it. He must be on the reds. Now then, the biggest break of this match so far. one all, 3 all. If ever you needed a ball, it's now. Hit them well. Cue ball's tracking towards the pocket, but it's safe. He's got the one. eight ball is has on nothing. Oh. He's got a long red. Oh, that's oh, that. horrible. That is disgusting. That is horrible. He's got to take the red on. Oh, there's no safety. There's, there's just nothing else on. He has... He has nothing but this red down the cushion. What's he looking at? full-blooded, all legs in one basket. Is he playing this at pace? What's he doing? Surely you don't play this at pace, do you? Oh, my God. Oh, my word. He cut it in the corner. What? Wow. I am... Lost for words. What a cut that oh is. My God. That's ridiculous. He's got to be unlucky because he's pushed a red safe. He has. Deserves better. He's playing a billiard, is he? He oh, is. Simon How's Ward. this going to come out? He's not the black safe and he's oh, knocked another Simon, red safe. He deserved better. He's got an angle. He's got an angle. This could be the finish of all finishes, this. 
He's digging. He's got an angle. He's not using that. I, I thought we'd go into him now. He's not going to play a skill shot there, is he? <sighs> you get right behind it. You get right behind it, yeah. Or is he going to play the double off the yellow? I don't know why, but I've just got a feeling that he's <laughs> going to pull something out of the hat here. I know why, because he has already. It's, it's just what he does. <laughs> I mean, he's got the angle now to just top him right and go into it. No. There we go. Now, I think that black goes past the red off yeah, the far yeah. jaw. Yeah. So I reckon, oh no, okay, so he's looking at screwing into almost flicking the yellow out the way, which would then, if he Fli flicks that yellow half ball, he flicks the red. He gets the red out, and what a brave shot this is to play. Oh my oh god. Oh my word. Oh my god. What are we seeing it now? Is he, has he got to play this in the middle? I think he's got to play it in the middle. I don't think it goes long. If it goes long, it's right behind it. I think it does go long. Oh, that yellow's in the way, surely, isn't it? It goes, it goes. Maybe he's only got half a pocket. He's played it. It's on its way. It's oh, there. This is one the of walk. the clearances of oh, all wow. time from Simon Ward. <laughs> Take all of the bows and all of the adulations because that is up. Th that's top five. You sick, sick puppy. <laughs> that... <laughs> You are disgusting, Simon Ward. You that are a disgusting human being. That is an all-time great finish uh, in any form of Q-Sports. You horrible, horrible human. Look at that. You are absolute filth, Simon Ward. Uh, he's played a billiard neck shot. Look at this neck shot he plays. I can't believe what I've just seen. C come of the hour. I mean, talk about a player for the big occasion. Three each in sets. Look I'm, at this. I am privileged he to is, watch that finish. He, he has played that to perfection. Look at the strut as well. I mean, he shows no emotion, but that, that's as much as you're going to get from Simon. Just uh, just a spring in the step, a little hop, skip and a jump. Just like, get out my way. That's I, my set, thank you very much. I'm speechless. I'm dumbfounded. Wow, that was incredible. Honestly, that was unbelievable. You know, you 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 look at, you think about the all-time great finishes. You think about that, um, that Chris Melling one, uh, Ben Davis in the, the, the final ben against David. Simon Ward. Funny enough, as well. Uh, actually, Ben Davis twice because there's another one of his that went viral um, yeah. from a Coventry tour yeah. a couple of years back. Um, that one was out of this world. I, I commentated on it. It was ridiculous, but. In terms of finishes I have seen live, and particularly the pressure that they're under, mm. I think that's number one for me. Oh, I, that's hard to beat. Given the given the um, situation of the match, you see a lot of these clearances, these viral clearances and stuff, and it's kind of like that. You know, it's it's one or in a race to nine or something like that. It's yeah. it's the guy six nil up in a race to eight, and he's just you know he's in cruise control and exhibition mode. That was that was as much pressure as th that's probably top ten pressure moments of Simon Ward's career. Yeah, yeah. I mean, up, it's up there, P particularly in this set format. You know, that's deciding set, and that's a such a crucial set as well. Mm. Let's all get our breath back. Let's watch some more pool on the outer tables. I'm done. I'm ready to leave now. <laughs> that, that's, that's you done me, for the week. That's isn't me it? done for the week. I'm all pulled out. Someone's going to have to do very, very well to top that. Yeah. Chris Bowron's just overrun one. Big time. Yeah, I think he's all right, though. Uh, Matt Schofield, by the way, is 2-0 up in this final set. And so this is to go 3-0. I mean, what, what, what a week has been for him. What a week it's been. Oh, he's underdone that a bit. Just underdone it a little bit, but... A shake of the head. Big shot for Bowron as well. That's a beauty. Yeah, played that well. That's a really nice shot. From the bazooka. Yeah, <laughs> the bazooka. Johan was um, 
just nodded his head in frustration at that one because Chris played a bad positional shot and got away with it. Yeah, a little puncher there. That's a way to celebrate, isn't it? Just punch the pocket. Why not? So, Mark set Boyle. four. <laughs> Art Boyle is under pressure like he would not have been for quite some time. Not this kind of pressure. And the pressure is ramping up because Mark Boyle has just thrown the cue ball off the table and how rare a sight is that? I'm running. Wow. I'm not sure I've ever seen Chris, but uh, sorry, talking about Chris Bow, and I'm not sure I've ever seen Mark Boyle fly the white off the table like that. That to me is um, to me is a sign of a man that's uh, under pressure. Yeah, he's a Mark throwing the cue ball off the table is rare. I, th I, I think I've seen it once in a stream game mm. prior to now, but it doesn't happen very often. But we we often remark about how he doesn't. It, but yeah, it, precisely. Given the power he gets into it, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's almost like I mean, of all the things that has needed to improve in this match, it's not Mark Boyle's break. He's broke great. You know, so it's yeah, um, yeah. It's actually been a couple of slack positional shots. Talking of which, there's one there from Simon Ward. Yeah, I think he's okay, isn't he? Can he? No. He can play this with check side and no, no? He's, he's in trouble there. Eh? He almost needs to double kiss the yellow. I think he'll slide past it and um, or screw up. Yeah, he had no. Oh, that's a good shot. Yeah, it's it's a good recovery, I think. I don't know if he can... He may have to cut the one he's closest to in to the centre now and try and hold the cue ball on the yellow in the middle of the table. Yeah, I mean, look, look, if he can catch that shot, full ball. The previous shot, if the cue ball's no, he's straight six inches this. further up the table, so he's having to play a double. Okay. Um, having to play a double and leave a, leave a cut in this black. But it, I think his confidence, he's going to be so high. He's just going to be like, just leave myself anything. I don't care. I'll I'll get anything. Now oh. the double. Now the position. Yeah. Doesn't want to be on the cushion, but um No. <laughs> Missed a similar ish one to this early yeah. doors. This is slightly easier. But I think he's in a definitely in a in a better mindset than he was before. Smooth as you like. Smooth as you like, Smooth and he leads like. by one frame to nil, and that is possibly Mark Boyle's last chance in many ways. Because Simon Ward now has the advantage in this set. Because that was Boyle's break. Yeah. So the next time Mark Boyle strides to the table, he could be 2-0 down. And there is a, you know, probably a 50-50 chance of that being the case. There is. Like I say, this is a, a unique kind of pressure that Mark Boyle's under. He is, on merit, the number one on the tour at the moment. And I think in anybody's mind, he he probably is the best pool player in the world right now. Um, no matter who your allegiances are with, uh, he is a, this, this, the kind of standout player. But, yeah, never been past the last 16 of the Worlds. and He's up, he's up against the guy that's been to the final twice, likes it, likes the format. Multiple winner and on the IPA, Simon Ward. Right up against it. I think if I could pick someone who I'd love to see win the Worlds who hasn't, it would be Simon Ward. Hey, do you know what? It'd probably be one of these two. You know, yes, especially if it's absolutely especially right. if it's two guys that haven't won it before. Yeah, I'd well, like to see right. Simon or Mark, both good guys. Yeah, both. Yeah, absolutely. Sort Nobody's yeah. got a bad word to say about either of them. No. Um, 
There we go. All of a sudden, the brake's working for him. I've got to say it as well. Mm. Watching that finish from Simon Ward, that is the first time I'm glad he beat me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have seen... I'd, 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 I'd never have seen that finish. No, no. You know? Yeah. That is That was worth it. Yeah. That was worth it. That was... Decision here for Simon. Does he go reds or yellows? And um, I'd probably say an equal amount of problems for both colour sets. It's like he's choosing reds. It's an interesting one, that, isn't it? Because the yellow is the easiest starter. Um, is he playing this r first red as a plant? Or is he yeah, I think the plant's almost unmissable. So now it's just about the angle. D d it doesn't want to get right on the back cushion and leave himself straight. But also, he needs to get close enough to it that he's not ham not snookered by the yellow. So yeah, there's a he's threading the needle with this one. Mm. Um, you almost play this too hard, maybe, and come off two rails. No, nope. yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, I'll, he'll take that all day long. Needs that to hold up, which I believe it has. Latest score in the top left corner. Matt Schofield 3-0 up in the deciding set against Lee Shepard. He's won six frames in a row in that match. He was 3-1 down in the previous set on the brink. Now Simon Ward just got to drift this in. Come back up table. Doesn't Needs. want to be straight. That's pretty good, I think. It's a bit straight. I think it's okay. I think he's all right there. Wants to get back over by that breaking line. Yeah, that's good. That's spot on. Yeah. I can can overrun this slightly, but don't don't want to over hit, don't want to underhit it. Don't want to be hampered by that yellow. So if it stops now, yeah. he'll be happy. He's in full flow here. He's recomposed himself. He's very good at that. Yeah, he's good. He leads by two frames to nil in the fourth set, and he leads by two sets to one. Simon Ward is in the zone here. He really is. Chris Bowron is three-one up in the th th in the fourth set against Johan Attard. He is uh, he is right up against it, Johan. Right he's up against well it. Well, he's got to win the next three and the next set as well, hasn't yeah. he? Yeah. He is in Matt Schofield territory. Yep. 2-1 down and 3-1 down. And yet, Matt Schofield at the table looks as though he is going to take his place in the World Championship quarterfinals. And what a story that would be for Matt. Yeah, and uh, I think Lee Shepard looks resigned to defeat, doesn't he? Well, this is the key shot, isn't it? This is... This is the one, not hampered by the black. That's perfect. It's Looks absolutely good. perfect. Does look good. And I think Lee has basically just picked up his towel as a bit of a white flag, to be honest. Mm. Matt won't be feeling quite that confident. In off the break from Mark Boyle. Mark. In off the break. Mark Boyle's gone in off on the break on the main table. Going from bad to worse for Mark Boyle, and the layout of this table looks looks very, very good. Another look at this break. Unlucky. Very unluckily yes. kicked in off. Yeah, hit it well. Um, got flicked in off, and it tracked towards that corner pocket. Not Mark Boyle's fault, that. And just a beautiful table, this, on yellows. Yeah, look, Simon wants to pot this and just take out the four at the bottom. Uh, go up table and it, it, it's, it's as long as he can get himself back up table when he's got three yellows left um, this is quite an easy clearance for Simon he'll play the plant I, th I believe he'll play the plant first um, and then he'll probably leave I mean he's got so many options he could leave the one over the top left corner till last he could probably play the one over the corner pocket till last and play the black into the right middle left middle sorry 
Uh, this here really is just d don't get too ahead of yourself. Just stay calm and uh, stay calm and um, hold yourself together. He's just taking his extension. A wise move. I can tell you Matt Schofield is through to a World Championship quarter final. What a comeback that is. <laughs> He was behind yesterday in the last set as well. I think 3-2 down in the deciding set against Corey Reese. So he's he's definitely not struggling for bottle, is he? No, no, he is not. I meant slightly twitchy one into the centre. Yeah, this is the big shot, this. Um, not the most difficult shot he's ever going to play in his career, but wants to get the white right up the other end of the table if he can. I think he'd like to play the plant first if he could. I agree. He'd, he'd love for the the yellow on the left-hand side to be his last one. Mm. That would be ideal. Um, it might not be. He might play the one... Yeah, I don't think he can now because he hasn't got... He's got too much angle on the plant, so if he plays the plant now, he's then got to play the one over on the left-hand side next, you would think. Yeah, so I think try and get uh, as close as he can, actually, to this plant. Don't leave too much distance. That's pretty good. And he'll play this dead weight. And um, and then it's still fairly easy from there. Don't think this was his original plan, but he's fine. He'll see he's just come over. He's got a little window, a little gap there. Yeah, just don't flick the black. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Yeah, just uh, you want to get slightly off the side cushion. And I think the black goes into the middle pocket. See, I thought he might screw out for it, but he no. might, yeah, he's just going to drop it in, is he? It doesn't look like it. He screwed out for it. Absolutely fine either or. I think that was a better shot because there was more margin for error. I think if you overhit the laying on it into the centre. 3-0, he's on the brink. He is well on the brink. He needs one of the next four frames to knock Mark Boyle out in the last 16 stage. The number one seed. And Chris Boron requires just one more frame to knock the Maltese goat out. Johan Attard has had a great run. Is it about to come to a premature end from his perspective? There's not a lot of work to do here for Chris. He's quite confident, the bazooka. Now that is a great nickname. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give you that. Three left in from the northeast, in what they'd call their home venue. Chris Bowron, and up next on the stream, we've got Craig Brown against Mark Farnsworth. So there'll be a bit of local support if uh, Chris Bowron can make it through to the uh, quarterfinals. You're guaranteed to have either Craig Brown or Mark Farnsworth in the quarterfinals. love to stay with Chris Bowron but Simon Ward is breaking for the match dry it's dry is there a twist if anyone can do it <laughs> it's Mark Boyle isn't it if anyone can do it oh, he's hit those sweet as well he's hit those so sweet Update on table four in the deciding set. Liam Dunster is uh, one nil up. That deciding set. A decision time now for Mark because you feel like he's got to take the three ball plant. I feel like he's not been at the table. No, he hasn't. For the last 20 no. minutes. But the problem is in taking the three ball plant is there is an awkward red on the table over on the left hand side so and it's about to get more awkward because mm. he's now stuck a yellow on top of it yeah he does have a perfect ball to break it out um, that red nearest the bottom left corner he's 
I think he's Ideal. also he could, he could argue that the one uh, just to the right of the braking line is perfect as well. Um, well if anything, better because well he's guaranteed to be on the ball. We see he's just up in the pace a little bit here, Mark, as well. Yeah, this is the one. Wants to hit the red, not the yellow. Mm, that's not great. No, he, he's he's not got into that as much as he wanted. He wanted to catch. He wanted to catch the red full, but he's yeah. caught the yellow full and flicked the red. But the nice news is that he still has that one that I was talking about. Does, and that's why you should always go into your bad ball as early as possible. Absolutely. And now I'm surprised at that one, mm. if I'm honest. Yes. Um, I think that's a little bit of a rush of blood to the head from Mark, because I can see why he wanted to go into it in that shot, but I mm. just thought, you know, you leave it for the next one. You might have to play it as a double now, Dan. I don't have a choice. Or I mean, if he, if I he mean, does he has. think it just drops into the centre? But you can't get on the black from no. there. So he's got to play the double, and he's got to play it now, in my opinion. Well, and and if he has, why has he topped the white through and not stunned it? True. I think you see it with even the absolute best. Every sport now and again, they will just they will be a little bit flustered. That's, is that far enough for no, the I double? Think that's fine. I think you can play this with. Um, the harder you play it, the more it's gonna. The more it's going to um, straighten up. Huge shot. Nailed. Yeah. That's Nailed. a beauty. World Championship on the line. If he misses that, he's he's probably out. Yep. This man can deal with pressure. Don't you worry about that. That is a brilliant double under the circumstances. Yes. It wasn't a gimme double at all. Not at all. Mark Boyle. Not another twist in this match, <laughs> is there? Well, he's alive, Mark Boyle. And so is Johanna Tard. What's the bazooka done? Tell you what he's done. He's left a red over the pocket and those yellows are still not easy. It's a testament, isn't it, to how hard it can be to get over the line mm. in this matches, in, in this format. Definitely. One each now um, in the deciding set between Liam Dumpster and Gareth Hibbert. Five. That's back on serve. It's back on break. I'm Mark Boyle's got to be thinking to himself, it's just... Uh, I mean, how many times is he breaking clear twice in a row? He's just, just relying on a Simon Ward dry break to, to, to nick himself this set? You think so? Oh, this is messy. Oh, this is messy. Wow, look at those. Mm. Well, the good news for Mark is if you get yourself a red first up, then you're well in control in this frame. Bad news is that is not easy. Got a plant in the middle. The, the the red he's playing isn't guaranteed to finish anywhere nice. That's Just interesting. All together. Missed the plant all together. So now, Simon Ward, I mean, you've got options. The thing is, there's no way to go for the reds without opening everything up. You've got to open the yellows up as well. It's not like you can... If the red passes the black into the corner, I think he goes into it off that, but maybe it doesn't. Well, I wonder. Mm, I did wonder if he was going to leave the double. Does he just bump the red out? 
that's just below the easy red. Push that yellow further down into the side cushion and say over to you, Mark. I'm 3 1 up in this set. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think that's what he's doing. He's not the sort of player who often takes a backward step. And not that this is necessarily a backward step. There you go. Over to you, Mark. Yep. <laughs> Simon's now now only got one bad ball. Uh, I don't think Mark's on anything that goes. Uh, I mean, Hawk could queue and he can play the yellow into the black pocket, but. Sensible move. It's just held back a little bit there. Simon, not push the boat out. Others would. Three went up. This is my chance. Uh, Oh, that r that red doesn't want to go in. Oh, oh, close. Now the yellow over that right middle pocket uh, doesn't cover the other red, so it does go. That red. Yeah, I, d I don't know what opening red. Simon has it. Do you think the? The red that's sort of in line with the cue ball goes off the yellow into that centre pocket. Good point here. I mean, has he actually got a first ball? Could possibly play the red that's in line with the centre pocket off the other red. And it might sneak in past the yellow, but... Maybe. I don't Probably have to play that quite gently, actually. Needs that to drop. Oh no, Simon Ward. Mm. Well, well. Can Mark Boyle find that shot here that's going to open everything up for himself? And is there another twist in the tail in this match? Gareth Hibbert, by the way, is now 2-1 up in the deciding set against Liam Dunster. From 2-0 down. In sets, he said if yep. anyone can do it, it's Gareth Hibbert. Still no update from Chris Boron's game. Was 3-2 up and looked like he was about to book his place in the quarterfinals, but messed up on his last ball. Still 3-2, it shows. How much pressure is there going to be on the next Simon Ward break? feel, palpably feel the tension beginning to rise. Boron's through. There it is. Boron is through to the quarterfinals of the World Championships. The comeback's on here as well. Mark Boyle was 3-0 down in this set. It is now 3-2. Huge pressure on the next ward break. Our second set of last 16 matches underway. Six. And there is the conqueror of the defending world champion. There we go. Liam Roberts. From one Welshman to another. He's taken a bit off this break and it has worked out for him beautifully, has it? Oh, I don't know. 
Does he have an opener? He's got another one, hasn't he, where he's just... This has happened a lot to him this match, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. Where he's just... He's hit those sweet. Yeah, held the cue ball fairly well, but not, not on anything. He's got the plant, the, the red onto the yellow. Long. It's a big shot, that. Big and shot. And if the red covers the pocket, then you've got a yellow that's absolutely dead. What else has he got, though? Got a thin snick on the red. Down towards the bottom left corner. True. I think that's the shot. Ride your luck a little bit. Yeah, you got to. But you'd be unlucky not to be on anything yes. afterwards. Let's go with your option, Dan. He's made the pot as he just. Oh, he overcut that a little bit. <laughs> he did. Now, tension turns. It's come out okay, I think. So the black, I think, now. It's probably going to be his hardest ball. Okay, so he's looking at playing the red centre of the table, nudging into the yellow. Then, he's going to be leaving himself a good angle on either of these two reds by the breaking line. Well, he's swung oh, his cue in anger there, but I tell you what. He likes it. He's Just made a big pocket for the black. He doesn't need to move it now. does, yeah. The black goes off the red, uh, off the yellow. So nothing needs moving now. No. His biggest problem now is this red over on the left-hand side of the table. Oh, that looked a bit twitchy. I think it was a bit rushed. Yeah, I agree. Sure. Incredible speedball player, speed speedball player. Simon Ward used to play juniors against him. When I played for England juniors, he was obviously Wales. And uh, we used to have some right old battles in the, um, we used to do a team, there would be a team uh, speedball challenge. Where you'd have like three or four players and they'd tag each other in. And he was incredible at speed pull. Yeah. So the shot clock isn't really something that, although he's quite a measured player, isn't really something that it could perhaps help him sometimes, I think. When he, could, when he plays off instinct. But he's not feeling like that now. So no, now, now this red. I think it passes. The, the table, I think it passes, but only just. Now what you don't want to do Flick the yellow. Just flick the yellow out of the way. Yeah. Is it almost worth topping through and taking that last red long? Well, no, evidently not. And he's he's not run as far as he wanted to there either. No, but I think that's okay. I, I think it's still just a it's a plain ball shot. This. You don't want to be just got to not yellow. flick the yellow. Got to not flick the yellow. Hasn't flicked the yellow. That is about as good as it could be, but he is hampered. He is hampered. It's not a gimme, this. It's a little bit far away from the pocket. It, it could hit the far jaw. If that cue ball was an inch to the left, it's a gimme. Inch and a half to the left, it's a gimme. This for the match. Nailed there it. There we are. Cue ball safe. Mark Boyle is heading home. Simon Ward, what a performance to send the number one packing. Incredible from the Welshman. Unbelievable. And the boomerang strikes again. 3-0 and a set down. Yeah. And he's come back with the comeback of all comebacks. It was, was unbelievable. Um, yeah, like you say, what a performance. It, it, was, uh, it was some absolute brilliance. A couple of twitchy moments in the middle section. Of that match we saw some uh, um, I mean the, the, the set to when Simon was a set down and 3-0 down we saw Mark Boyle miss a couple of chances one quite easy one quite difficult um, to take a two two sets to nil lead and I think that could have probably been the writing on the wall yeah um, and and Simon's just found a way just done what he does and some brilliance, and, and it, at three all in the previous set, I mean, wow, one of the best clearances you will ever see, ever. Ever, ever, ever. ever. But uh, taking into consideration the situation of the match, 
which often gets overlooked when you see these great clearances you often it often gets overlooked that yeah but the guy was 4-1 up and cruising at the time or he was playing a guy that he was always going to beat anyway like the situation of that match uh, for Simon to do what he did there at 3 all in that third set was off the charts well it's been a stone cold classic here on the arena table and now we can hear from the man who made it so Simon Ward is in the studio thanks Dan and here I am joined uh at ringside, really, uh, by Simon Ward. Simon, you look really happy about that uh, clearance at the end there, and uh, you've got to be really pleased with uh, a solid performance, you've got to say. Yeah, I mean, I was, until I won the, the second set, I wasn't even in the match, to be honest. I was, I was miles out of it. I was really lucky to get back into the, into the second set to win that. And then I, f I felt really good after that then. Yeah, I felt good. Missed a few, but that's the way it goes. And the first set, I mean, that's probably one that got away from you and um, you probably should have gone three, two up. Would you, would you agree with that? Uh, yeah, definitely. I, I missed, I think I missed, yeah, I, did, I missed a black, easy black actually. And that got me a bit angry. <laughs> uh, and I, but I played a lot better after that. I still missed a few, but I played a lot better. And to come back in that, uh, that, that final set that we saw there, uh, did you, you know, did it go through your mind? You just do not want this to go to two-two because -two all sorts of things will start going through your mind. Not really. I was just trying to win, to be honest. I mean, I wasn't really. I mean, it wouldn't have, you know, from three and a half in the last set to to go to a deciding set wouldn't have been ideal. But I was just just trying my best to get over the line, really. I mean, this is part of one of the uh, the best clearances we'll probably <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll see pretty much throughout this tournament. Was it? What did you really saw of when you went back to your seat there? What was you thinking? Well, I mean, it was. It wasn't. When I, f I mean, I had, I had nothing to go at apart from a really tough red first shot. But once I parted the red, I thought I must have a finish on, and it wasn't really there. But I was at the point then where I had to go for them because Mark's yellows were, were were open. So I played another sort of decent shot to get to pot another red, and then everything just started getting a bit messy really. And I just from there on, I was just trying to chase the finish. But I think the the last one red was a good shot just to flick the yellow because if I flicked the yellow the black went and then I was almost guaranteed to have some kind of shot on the on the last red so I played that pretty much perfectly. And obviously you've not been at a, a couple of tours this season you know did you feel a little bit more fresher do you think that's helped you the no. way that your <laughs> style plays or? Not at all no no I feel feel yeah I don't feel too clever out there to be honest I mean it's uh, I, I, you know, I settled once I settled it was fine but it's um it's hard to sort of hit the ground running when you're not playing as many matches as you used to, you know, especially when it's when you're up against tough, uh, you know, the big boys. I mean, you definitely upset a, a betting coupon somewhere yeah, yeah. along the way. I mean, did you did you think that you was free rolling, or did, is there some added pressure to, that you put on yourself? Because obviously you're playing the number one seed, the most consistent player for the 2023 season. Did it add any pressure to you? Uh, not really. No, I mean, I, I enjoy those matches. I I kind of enjoy playing the best players. So I mean, I was just looking forward to it. I, I, I I could win the match because I've done it before but similarly Mark's bashing up a few times so I was just yeah, looking forward to the match and um, hoping to play well which I did in the end and here as for the world championships you know you seem to always come up with some results somehow you know I know you're obviously quite surprised sometimes but uh, you know you do put up some great performances to get them results D is it something you always look forward to each year to come to the world championships uh yeah it is yeah it's, I mean it's the one everyone wants to win I suppose isn't it and you know I've got close twice um I mean, apart from the two finals, I think I don't think I've made it past the first round. To be honest, so I'm hoping that this is a good omen to get me to get me to at least another final. And last year, obviously, you was one match away from from beating Clint. You know, does does do you have any regrets from last year? Have you have you tried to work on a little bit for this year? Um, not really. You know, I mean, I mean, the two finals I've played in. I mean, um, you know, myself against Ben, it was deciding frame. It could have gone either way. Nothing, you know, I, I couldn't blame myself for, for for playing in that match. I played really well, and against Clint, I mean, I've played pretty well actually. But he's, he's he was on fire that day, you know what I mean? So and I, and I, it was still quite close. I was one or two balls away from 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 making it really close. So um, yeah, just just the way it goes. Just try to play one match at a time and um, see how far I get. And I'm not sure if you remember six years ago. <laughs> Um, back in 2018, of course. I know you lost that final throughout, but uh, this match against Mark Boyle was yeah. apparently the first ever TV match. Did, yes. did it, do you know? Do you recall that? Yeah, I, yeah, I remember it. Yeah, because I remember I, I I'd been out of the game for three months, and at the time Mark was an amateur and he was the one that no one wanted to draw as a seed, uh, and I drew him. And I thought, well, obviously it's not ideal by any stretch, but then I thought, well, actually, I need a match like that to get me sort of in the groove, and I and I turned up and played really really well so it worked in my favour in the end 
and your, your next opponent. We already know who you're going to be playing next. Not sure if you've looked too deep into the draw, but Chris Boron, he's okay. beat, jo you, you know, Johan yeah, yeah. Attard, beating him three, three, uh, three sets to one. Yeah. Uh, is that a match you're looking forward to? I mean, Chris looked like he'd be playing quite well as yeah. well. He, yeah, because he's, he's local as well, isn't he? So yeah, I am looking forward to it, yeah. So hopefully there'll be a bit of a crowd watching us. And uh, I, I, yeah, I, as long as there's loads of people watching and hopefully cheering for the other guy, I'm happy. Do you feel that like, you know being like a, a local favourite or you know a bit localish? Do you feel that that benefits you or does it add some pressure? It, I think it benefits. It benefits me. It might. It, might be, it probably benefits Chris as well. Like obviously, the more support you want, the better. But um, I tend to play better when there's when there's a lot of people watching. I don't know why that is. It's just I, I just I suppose I feel a bit more nervous and I feed off it. And just a little bit.